Well, this is about the time I pop up here and say, good morning, New Hope, but it is evening. So good evening, New Hope. Good evening. And uh, thank you. I hope you're having a, a wonderful Christmas time. I hope you're just uh, enjoying the season. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the company that's, uh, that's around at this time of the year. You know, it's, uh, it's interesting that, uh, you know, Tim just, Pastor Tim just read uh, from Luke, the Christmas story. And it's interesting that we often think of the Christmas story as being uh, in the New Testament primarily. But I want to share something with you tonight, and I, I, I promise to be brief. You know, the idea of Christmas is not just in the New Testament. The idea of Christmas, the story of Christmas, is found not only in the New Testament, but it's woven between the pages of Scripture, Old Testament and New Testament, from the very beginning. Because ultimately, here's why. Ultimately, Christmas is the story of Jesus coming to rescue us from the penalty of our sin. That's ultimately what it all boils down to. And it begins with his, his birth. And so at Christmas, we celebrate that birth. But, but here's the interesting part. Did you know? Did you know that Christmas is as far back in the Old Testament as Genesis? Genesis. The Christmas story really begins in Genesis. You say, where did you read that? How do you find Christmas in Genesis? I'll show you. Glad you asked. <laughs> it's called the Proto-Evangelion. The Proto-Evangelion, that's what fancy theologians call it. Us ordinary people call it just the story of Christ's birth that is foretold, that is prophesied in, in Genesis. And it's found in Genesis 3. And normally we put scriptures up on the board, but I didn't tonight. We're just going to keep it simple. I want you to listen to this. Genesis chapter 3, verses 12 through 15, okay? The man said, and this is after the fall, right? Adam and Eve had sinned. God found him in the garden. And the man said, the woman whom you gave me to be with me, she gave me the fruit of the tree and I ate. Us guys always got to blame it on the woman, you know. <laughs> then the Lord said to the woman, what is this that you have done? And the woman said, the serpent deceived me. The serpent deceived me. And so that's why I ate. I was deceived. By whom? By the serpent. The Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you. Cursed are you. You are cursed beyond all the livestock and above all the beasts of the field. And on your belly shall you go and the dust shall you eat all the days of your life. But I will put enmity between you and the woman. There's strife. There's enmity. And between your offspring and her offspring, he, that's her offspring, shall bruise your head, but you shall bruise his heel. The, the serpent's all about the business of bruising heels. He's all about the business of still trying to get us to trip up, still trying to deceive us into falling away from God, uh, 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 lying to God, uh, uh, sinning against God. And so he's constantly biting. You know, you can imagine that, that snake, that serpent, how, how, you know, he bites that heel. Let me tell you, it's, it's painful. It's painful. And if you don't do something about it, it can be a death sentence. If you don't take action, if you don't take the remedy that's afforded you. But let me tell you, that bruising of the head, that crushing, some translations say crushing, he will crush your head. The seed of the woman will crush the serpent's head. Satan's done for. Satan's done for. His schemes have been conquered by Jesus Christ. His head is crushed. See, this, this whole idea of he will bruise your head, that's a foretelling of the coming of Messiah. That's a foretelling of the coming of Jesus, who ultimately would destroy sin and death. This is the first foretelling, in fact, in Scripture of the coming of the Savior, Messiah, the Christ, Jesus, who would ultimately crush the head of Satan. He would destroy the power of sin and death once and for all so that he could save those who put their trust in him. And Christmas, after all, is the story of redemption. 
It's the story of, of my rescue, of your rescue. It's the story, listen, it's the story of the lengths to which God will go to call you back to himself. It's a love story, really. That's what Christmas is, did you know? It's a love story. Christmas is a love story, the story of God's love for you. I will close tonight by reading a letter to you. Now, this isn't an ordinary letter. This letter that I'm about to read to you tonight is a compilation of scriptures. For those of you who have been at New Hope any length of time, you know I used, like to use lots of scripture in my sermons. And tonight I was trying to keep it, you know, within about 10 minutes, and I thought, how am I going to use a bunch of scriptures? I got some news for you. I'm about to give you 52 scriptures. You said, I thought you were done. I am, almost. Very shortly, I promise you. How are you going to get 52 scriptures in real quick? I'll show you how. What I'm about to do is I'm going to read you a letter. I'm going to read you a letter that is nothing more than a compilation of scriptures, Old Testament and New Testament. And these passages have been put together in the form of a letter that reveal God's heart toward you. It's a letter to you directly from God. It's a letter containing the promises that God makes in the words of the Bible. And they're directed towards his children. They're directed to those whom he loves. They're directed toward those for whom he chose to send his son to die. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. That's what Christmas is all about. And I want you to listen to this letter. These are promises that God makes. This is God's revealed heart towards you. These are words from the Bible taken directly from Scripture for God's children. Those who have placed their trust in Jesus as their Savior. Those who have trusted Him to forgive their sins. And these words that you're about to hear tonight are God's Word from His Holy Scriptures. They are true, and they will, if you let them, tonight change your life. My child, you may not know me, but I know everything about you. I know when you sit down and when you rise up. I am familiar with all of your ways. Even the very heads, hairs on your head are numbered and I know them. And you were made in my image. In me you live and move and have your being. For you are my offspring. I knew you even before you were ever conceived. And I chose you when I planned creation. You were not a mistake. For all of your days are written in my book. I determined the exact time of your birth and where you would live. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. And I knit you together in your mother's womb. I brought you forth on the day that you were born. I have been misrepresented by those who don't know me. I am not a distant or angry God, but I am the complete expression of love, and it is my desire to lavish my love on you, simply because you are my child and I'm your father. And I offer you more than your earthly father ever could. For I am the perfect father, and every good and perfect gift comes from me. Every good gift that you receive comes down from my hand, for I am your provider, and I will meet all of your needs. My plan for your future has always been to fill it with hope. Because I love you with an everlasting love, and my thoughts toward you are countless as the sands of the seashore. And I rejoice over you with singing. 
I will never stop doing good for you. You are my treasured, precious possession. And I desire to establish you with all my heart and all my soul. I want to show you great and marvelous things. If you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. Delight in me, and I will give you the desires of your heart. For it is I who gave you those desires. And I am able to do more for you than you could ever possibly imagine. For I am your greatest encourager. I am also the Father who comforts you in all of your troubles. When you are brokenhearted, I am close to you. As a shepherd carries a lamb, I have carried you close to my heart. And one day, one day I will wipe away every tear from your eyes. And I will take away all the pain that you've suffered on this earth. I am your father and I love you, even as I love my son, Jesus, because in him, my love for you is revealed because he's the exact representation of my being. He came to demonstrate that I am for you, not against you, and to tell you that I am not counting your sins against you if you believe in me. Jesus died so that you and I could be reconciled. His death was the ultimate expression of my love for you. And I gave up everything that I loved so that I might gain your love. If you receive the gift of my son Jesus, then you will receive me and nothing, nothing will ever separate you from my love ever again. Come home. Come home and I will throw the biggest party that heaven has ever seen. I have always been your father, and I will always be your father. My question to you is, will you please be my child? I'm waiting for you. Love, your dad, almighty God. Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. That's what Christmas ultimately is celebrating. God loves us so much. Will you pray with me? Lord, thank you for Christmas. Thank you for this time to just pause. To just pause and Think about how much you love us. That's what this is really about. The trees and the tinsel and the lights are nice. But Lord, <laughs> you're all that matters. Your love and a relationship with you is everything. Without them, everything else is worthless. And Father, tonight on this Christmas Eve, would you just help to remind us just how very much you do love us. We thank you for the love that you've demonstrated for us in sending your son Jesus as a baby. For allowing him to live a sinless life and die a cruel death on a cross to pay the price for our sins. And Lord, tonight, we celebrate this peace that he brings, the joy that he brings. Tonight we celebrate this, this silent night, this holy night. Because Lord, you are the one that makes everything calm and bright. <laughs> You're the one, Lord, that gives true meaning to this celebration and true purpose to our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.